today we are finally doing our field test for the Prang Oval 8 Semi-Moist Watercolors. And I have heard and seen good things about these little watercolors. Oh look, this is neat. This is something, yeah, this is something you don't see with Crayola, look. You can just pop these little dudes out, buy replacements for them, fairly full little container, feels hefty. Or you can just grab the ones you want. Or you can even rearrange them into uh, a different assortment of colors. So we've got black, brown, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And this tray is also removable. So if you're a teacher and you know your kids have run through, you don't have to buy a whole new container. They actually sell just these inserts. And I'm pretty sure they also sell just these removable little cakes. Now it does come with a Prang white synthetic, probably a white Taclon watercolor brush. It sort of looks like those Princeton snap brushes. I'm pretty sure it's not. And it's got a double crimped ferrule, but we're not gonna use that today. Oh no, we're gonna use some regular, regular old watercolor brushes. And I will see what is gonna work for today. Oop, we've got a Princeton Kalinsky Sable 750. We've got a red sable from Utrecht. We've got a round squirrel from Creative Mark. We've got a small squirrel. This is a master from Blick. And I think other than like probably a very small, and that would be a very small Kalinsky Sable from Creative Mark Rhapsody, we've got what we need in terms of brushes. So the first thing I need to do so we can move forward with this is I need to go ahead and erase all the pencils from this line art. And this was lined with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida. But for those of you following along at home who may not feel comfortable ordering stuff off the internet, you can use a Sakura Pigma FB. These are also waterproof and you can get these at Michael's. Just a bit of a preamble, you might be wondering why I am reviewing so many inexpensive to downright cheap watercolor sets. I am doing this because I get a lot of requests from parents for watercolor sets that are suitable for their kids without being kind of demeaning or difficult to use or frustrating. So the only way to truly know whether or not it's any good is to put it to a field test. And I have seen a lot of hand letters and artists on Instagram with the praying sets in the photo. Now they don't obliquely say, or they don't, um, They don't outright say that they use the prank set, but they do put the prank set into their photos. So there's kind of an insinuation that, yeah, maybe they did, but they didn't outright say it. So if somebody calls them out on it, you know what I'm talking about. So I will put, I'll put my money where my mouth is. And I picked up this little set from my local Jerry's Artorama, but you guys can find a link in my description below to a similar Prang set. And they are, Prang also makes larger little watercolor sets than this. And you guys can check out the link to my unbox and swatch video here. So I think one of the first things I want to do is I want to attempt to mix a skin tone. And we've got some bright primaries to try that with. And I am, I think I'm just going to save myself some time, some effort, try to learn from past mistakes and do my mixing here in the wells provided. So I'm applying some water there. We'll grab some yellow, grab some red. I wanna make sure I get it saturated enough and then Grab just a little bit of brown and we need a piece of paper to do a swatch, a swatch, a swatching on. So that looks like it is a skin tone. It looks a little bit light to be a Kara skin tone. So I'm going to add some water so we have more to work with. 
and resume mixing. So yellow, lots more this time because we have a lot of area to cover here. Oh, I guess I grabbed some orange. That's okay, orange is just red mixed with yellow and then a little bit of that brown. And let's do another swatch. Oh, <laughs> I managed to mix the exact same color except in greater quantity. Well, that's good, but we want something a little bit darker. And already, I think these watercolors probably have a fair, that's a little bit darker, a fair bit of glycerin in them. So that is going to kind of affect mixability and just how much paint it takes to get the color we want. All right, time to get painting on some skin. So far, so good. Um, of course, with any watercolors, we need to see how it looks when it dries. And I mixed up plenty in the hopes that we will be able to um, let it evaporate a little bit, get darker skin tones that way, but also um, utilize that same color without worrying about remixing. So the reference that I have is a really cute plaid stripe dress and she's holding um, a candy, like a, a peppermint candy. I thought this would make kind of a cute Christmassy sort of thing because it's that time of year. Might not be that time of year when y'all are watching it, but it's that time of year when I'm painting it. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'll zoom out so you guys can see. I'm using the darkest red. And I'm just going to mix up a wash of that. And I'm gonna mix some orange in and that's gonna create kind of a, a more true red. Kind of brighten it up a little bit and let's go ahead and do some swatching now it's going to be our first color is probably going to be pretty light um it's going to take quite a bit of paint from these little cakeys to get the color we want even painting something this small with these sort of children's grade paints they use a lot of glycerin to help ensure the washability which means it takes, if you're building using a wash, if you're kind of gradually building up your colors and you want to use a lot of water to mix up a color, then um, it's going to take a lot of paint to get the color you want. That's a little bit better. It's kind of a muddyish color because we mixed, I mean, even though we mixed basically two reds, we still kind of mixed two colors together. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the blue. I'll segregate it way over here. And we're going to water that down and I'll do the top of her eye but we really want this for the candy because I think with these sort of paints glazing a color like this on top of like painted candy stripes it's just not going to work out very well so I have a feeling going about it in this direction will make for a more successful effect. So we're gonna do all of our, all of our shadow color on the candy first. And I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I did. And then we're going to work on building that up, darkening it before we ever add any of the red. And of course, I think the background will probably be green because we're doing Christmas. <laughs> so I'm gonna let the candy dry and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint her, um, her dress. Now, I kinda wanna max her hair color. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in our tray here. Not as much as the skin and certainly not as much as the dress. I probably overdid that. And we're going to mix up brown and orange. And I think it works really well as sort of the Venetian red I usually use for her hair. So I'm going to, even though everything is still kind of kipped up and dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do a layer on her hair. So far, I am fairly pleased with how 
these little paints are handling. They definitely do have a lot of glycerin in them, but I mean, that's not the end of the world. And we've reviewed so many affordable children and young student brands that, you know, I'm getting kind of used to the glycerin. Just as long as it isn't so prolific that you can't paint layers on top of it or it causes prior layers to lift off, then that's kind of a, a deal killer for me. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these tests is so that we can figure out if that's gonna happen. Go ahead and blend that out a little bit. And uh, I guess I would either, I either wanted to do another layer on the skin, which does need to happen or start the dress. And I think I'll go ahead and start on the dress. Oh, something else about these watercolors. There is no white, which is, I mean, I kind of feel like including a white in these sort of sets is a waste of, of effort and uh, it's kind of a wasted space. That's an area, usually the whites they include on these sets are terrible. So you are almost better off just getting, in fact, I think you're better off just getting a whole other color there. So I am glad to see that on this eighth set, Prang didn't waste the space with a white that wouldn't even really work. I don't know what they included instead of it, maybe the purple, maybe the brown, but I'm glad that it's not there. That said, I mean, if we're gonna nitpick, and not that I've been invited to nitpick, but sure, let's, let's, let's nitpick. Um, they could have left out the yellow, the orange because you can very easily mix an orange from yellow and red. Maybe not this red though. This red is kind of a dark red. So maybe the orange was a good choice because you can mix orange and that darker red and get a true red. So maybe I retract that statement. All right, we've got a good base and I'm actually going to use this pink to go ahead and do some blush and pink tones on Kara. And sometimes, especially on Caucasian skin, I'll do that a little later on. But since we're working with paints that have a lot of glycerin in them, or may have a lot of glycerin in them, although these are handling decently well, they're handling kind of reminiscent of the Yarkas I reviewed, which I really like. So I'm really excited about the set and it kind of makes me want to try the 24 color set that they have as well. Seems like everything is cool and dry to the touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer of skin tone. And while I was waiting for this to dry, I was kind of thinking about whether or not I want to use, to mix up and use the shadow color I normally do. In a lot of my other cheap watercolor videos, I do that and it ruins the piece. And it's not necessarily a technique that um, other artists might necessarily utilize. So it's not like layering skin tones where a lot of artists use that technique. That's something important to test for. That's just something kind of specific to how I liked watercolor. So I also, if it always works poorly, if the end result is always bad, is that really a technique I want to show you guys with these sets? Is that really a technique I can recommend for you guys to use in your own art? because really, regardless of whether or not I like these sets, um, if you own this set, if this is what you're using, then I want to be able to demonstrate techniques that will help you achieve the best art you can. And some of that is a learning process for me because I'm not necessarily familiar with these sets yet. So um, I'm still learning and I'm kind of applying what I've learned from painting Kara pages and other illustrations to these young, like student grade sets. So um, maybe I also need to adjust how I, uh, how I proceed with this rather than expecting all of the sets to live up to what I want. So <laughs> all that preamble aside, I wanna mix her skin tone darker cause we're not getting enough contrast. And I know it's going to take a lot of paint to get what I want. Oh, and I've been using that Princeton Kalinske Sable 750R 
which is like a $14 brush that might sound, it's probably kind of ludicrous when we compare the fact that we're using like uh, an $8 set of watercolor. Okay, so this just picked up a big old glob of orange. We don't want all that. All right, so we've got a darker color. That is a very brown. Let me see if I can, if that was just a lot of brown on the brush. Not that there's anything wrong with brown. I just wanna make sure that our skin tones are kind of matching. And uh, if I remember to, I wish I could say you guys remind me, but I can show you guys how to mix darker skin tones at the end of this video. It's actually very simple. It's pretty much using the same principles, but in different proportions and in different quantities. So I'm gonna let that layer I just put down dry and then we'll move on. All right, let's go ahead and put that darker skin tone to use. What a lot of artists also do is um, instead of mixing up a whole separate color for adding shadow to skin, they will add those colors to their skin tone and then layer that in. And I think it depends on the kind of art you're doing and the materials you're working on. I seem, I mean, I'm not insulting the idea. It seems like a good idea. Um, and perhaps something I should try. I would just be afraid of me personally ruining the skin tone and then not being able to salvage it. Because what I do is I'll mix a shadow color and then if that's not working, I'll go ahead and layer skin tone on top of it, as you guys have seen before. And I also need to be careful about not covering as much. I think with student gray watercolors, less is in general probably more in that covering. Less, doing less work on the skin will probably result in a better overall in product. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my Venetian red darker as well. So I'm gonna grab, I'll zoom out so you guys can see. I'll grab some of this darker red and ugh, probably too much brown. With, what, with these uh, glycerin paints also, it's a little darker, but not actually too noticeable. With these glycerin paints, if you just let the water pool in them the way we might with um, paints that use other types of binders, they actually get soapy and goopy and you'll pick up too much with your brush at any given time. So it's definitely something to be aware of and to work around. So um, I'm thinking about it and I don't necessarily know how I'm gonna get Kara's hair dark enough. Um, I see a lot of artists who have these like really light, loose pastel watercolor styles. Um, and those are beautiful styles and I really like them. That's not, I mean, I could leave this in the kind of in the state it's in and uh, go for that look. And I think these Prang watercolors would be excellent for that. That's why I'm bringing this up, that if you have that kind of style or if you're willing to adopt that kind of style for something like this, then um, these watercolors are great for that, would be good for, um, like it, like the banyos I uh, reviewed recently would be good for like travel sketching, um, especially if what you want to sketch are people. So I am slightly off camera, apologies. I am mixing up a color that can be used as a skin tone shade. Go ahead and yeah, that'll work. But these handle really well, I think, as um, sort of just light washes. And we'll see, I'm gonna try to mix some darker colors. I know it can be done. I've done it with the, the Daniel Smith Essential Six. So I know I can do darker colors with very limited palette. Um, it just may take a lot of mixing and a lot of swatching. But I wanted to point this out before I ruin this piece that if where I'm at right now is sort of your level of a finish. You don't really want to go a lot darker than this. You don't want to go a lot more detailed like this. Um, these watercolors will be great for what you're doing. And uh, 
are a very inexpensive way to procure watercolors for that purpose. So I'm currently compiling a top three inexpensive watercolors that I can recommend. And uh, depending on how the rest of this review goes, these will make it on that list. And I really want to get that list done before the holidays so that I can hopefully catch parents who are looking to buy for their kids. Maybe I can help some kids get some decent, yet inexpensive art supplies this year, which would be great. Okay, so I did my shadow skin tone. I mixed blue violet and that sort of dark red, red violet, and it seems to have worked out okay. I'm not gonna push that any further. I do want to try and get my dark brown, or my brown darker. I'll swatch the regular brown for you guys. As you guys can see, it's fairly opaque. There's a lot of glycerin in it, and it's also just not a super dark brown. It's kind of a, a middle of the range brown. What I'm thinking about doing, and I'll just mix it here on the paper, is black plus brown to get sort of a, a sepia, which is actually just about, about the perfect color for what I want. So I think that will actually work out really well. And that kind of alleviates my concern about mixing darker colors with this set. So I'm going to let this skin tone dry and then I'll kind of evaluate everything. I don't want to make Kara too dark just because that's not Kara's skin tone, but I think I could mix some nice darker skin tones. And I did promise you guys that I would demonstrate that for you. So that makes me hopeful that you you could actually get a variety of people done with this sort of set. So when I mixed up that darker color, I was actually pretty pleased with what I was able to get with it. So I'm going to try and mix up a mid-tone, something a little lighter than that. I want that to be the darkest color I end up with for her hair. And I'm also trying and I'm having some trouble, but not because of the paint, it's just me having some personal problems. Um, sort of getting the sharpness I want with the hair, sort of the uh, sharpness in the, what's the word am I looking for? In the shine, there we go. But I think that will work. So switching over to a much smaller brush, I'm gonna go ahead and do her, oh, and she had one little hair. There we go. And do her eyebrows, like I was just about to say. Actually, I'm going to use the lighter hair color. Actually, I'm gonna use the lighter hair color first to kind of fix some of these areas so that they're a little, a little bit darker. And get that. And then up here too. And I also want to do the freckles. Maybe top of her eyelid. I do want to do some more blush on her cheeks because not necessarily enough of that. So hopefully it doesn't mess up the freckles too much, but I can always redo the freckles if necessary. And I've been kind of holding off working on her dress. All right, so we've kind of worked around everything but her dress. And one of the reasons I've done that is because the dress I have referenced is this really cute red, green, and white sort of plaid dress. I mean, it's really just perfect for Christmas. And it's very, it really reminds me of the sort of things my mom would put me in when I was a kid. So um, I definitely think it's a good choice. I wanna draw that dress. Um, the thing is, I would prefer to just use the colors in this palette since, you know, we're kinda doing a thing together. And the, since the dress has white stripes and I've already 
So what I would do is if I were working um, with a different palette, if I were doing a different sort of demonstration, I would go ahead and paint my dark colors and then go in with an opaque white like gouache or like Copic opaque white or Dr. P.H. Martin's bleed proof white and I would add the stripes after. Um, I can use a clear wax resist crayon and draw the stripes in now, but I don't think that would look as good. I could also use a white color pencil or a white watercolor pencil, and that might be the direction I opt to go in. Or I may just be a weak person and use that white correction. And the reason I don't want to necessarily do that is just because that's not necessarily something people would have on hand. So um, I do want to try and use things that are available and accessible um, even without, if, if you were just, well, I say that and I used a nicer brush, but um, just trying to work with what we've got, so. I'm going to think about that a little bit more and come back. I still haven't decided exactly how I want to handle this red, but what I will probably end up doing is I will probably end up being weak and end up using a white watercolor pencil and some PH Martin's bleed proof white to add white corrections or white accents really. And the white watercolor pencil is not such a big deal because those are pretty inexpensive and pretty easy to get a hold of. You could also use a white color pencil. So even just like a white Crayola color pencil, for example, would do most of the service. All right, little more blush. It's handy for me that these are basically the same color. And I'm gonna need to mix subsequent layers of the dress darker, but next I'm gonna do some green. So I think we can finally get to the darker red on the peppermint candy here. And I do wanna leave some white because these sort of candies tend to have like a really shiny surface so they would bounce some of that light Unfortunately, this is not quite as dark and saturated, well, saturated really, like vibrant and saturated as I had hoped, but that's okay. We can always work on that. And then I'm gonna freehand some thinner ones. And give that a, ch oh yeah. And I wanna do the green on her dress. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the plaid. Okay, that's drying a little lighter than I kind of expected that color to dry since I applied it pretty opaquely, I thought. So I'm gonna go in, give some of those stripes another coat. Though I think it's going to end up being very cute. And then I'm going to use a broken line to sort of indicate the cross pattern on the plaid. And I actually think painting plaids is a lot of fun. Painting and markering them usually turns out really nice and looks like you put a lot of effort into it when you, <laughs> you really didn't. It was really pretty simple, but I also have kind of grown to enjoy doing surface designs on fabric when I actually have the time to do so and I'm not trying to get something done on a short timeline. Oh, almost forgot over here. And then I could do another cross line, but I think I'm gonna do that with a blue. So next I'm gonna grab some of this blue. I think it's a blue violet, let's see. No, it's actually kind of a nice middle of the range blue. You could add some green and make it a cool influence blue. Oh, you guys can't even see, I'm so sorry. Uh, you could add some green and make it a cool influence blue, or you could even add some red and warm it up, I would think. I mean, you're not gonna get like a, a cerulean from it or a, um, an ultramarine, but it's a decent sort of middle, not too cool, not too warm. Okay, 
So on the arms, the blue's going the other way and I'll make it every other. And then I do kind of want to darken the red up. I might just do dark red stripes. And they're going, now I've confused myself. <laughs> That's okay. One of the nice things about plaids is that they're often so busy that people can't really tell anyway. And then I'll grab some of this red violet again. So I feel like all her face got kind of loosely rendered, looser than I, I kind of wanted. Maybe I shouldn't have added the skin shadow color. I kind of wish I'd gone darker with the red for her dress because I think it's really cute where I did do it. And also did not actually do a good job shading in the dress. So I know I probably will not be able to do a glaze, which would be a good solution for this because we have some areas that have a lot of those other colors on it. And now I'm gonna have to work around that. Just do the best I can and not stress too much over it. And then up here in the bow. Now we need to paint the background. I wanted to show you guys how murky that water already is. We didn't really do a whole lot with it. Um, I can only, only guess that's because there's a lot of like optical binders and probably some fillers in this. So I'm gonna go really Christmassy because if you're gonna draw a kid holding a peppermint, you might as well go super Christmassy. Kind of boxed myself into a corner and ran out of areas to mix up a wash and I don't want it to be full saturation. So hopefully that's enough. Oh, that's going to be so Christmassy. It's like as Christmassy as the card I did on this channel. I think I'll wash in a little bit of the darker green. And I really do wish I'd gone darker with that dress. That's what happens when you're on Discord while you're also recording. You get distracted. And I got distracted. But to get 100% on the topic, of whether or not these are any good. They're actually pretty decent. Um, they do have some binders. They do have some optical brighteners in them. That's kind of what is making the water so cloudy so quick. Um, and that's really to be expected for, you know, children's grade watercolors. They want the colors to be fun. They want the colors to be vibrant and inviting. And um, they want you to get a lot of bang for your buck. A lot of kids don't have the sort of patience it would take to paint something. Like this, of course, there are a lot of kids who do. That's why we're doing these a little bit more serious reviews. Because I do know there are some kids out there who do indeed have the patience for something a little, a little more finished. So I'm going to let the background dry. Maybe let everything dry for a while. And my camera is wreaking havoc with that color. It is not lime green. I assure you it's actually kind of a nice bluish green, kind of a, a grass green going on. And I will decide after this has had a chance to dry whether or not we're gonna come in and do anything extra. That lifelong dilemma of the face being overworked and everything else kind of existing in limbo. 
So if these were nicer watercolors, and I am not slamming this set for what it is because it's actually very good for what it is, but if these were nicer watercolors, I would feel more confident doing some glazes to adjust things. And I say that, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then I guess I'll live to regret it or not. And I don't know if I mentioned earlier in this video, but I am using very inexpensive Canson watercolor paper, the kind that comes in a ream with a hundred sheets. And part of that is definitely my own economics. I need to be able to use the supplies that I can sustainably afford. And that is something I can sustainably afford. But also, it's very similar to what most people would be able to easily afford. So basically what I'm doing is putting down color and then quickly wicking it away. Uh, and I, I know I said I overworked the face and here I am overworking the face some more. But what I want to do is I was kind of testing it out on the face. What I want to do is I also want to do another glaze on her dress and get it a little darker, get it a little more worked. And then if I have to reapply these colors to the dress, hopefully what I'm hoping will happen is that the colors don't bleed too much, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll live to regret it, right? All right. So let's risk ruining it all almost quite literally. Gonna get a big, soft, natural brush, least likely to disturb prior layers, although it's pretty likely that that's gonna happen. And we're gonna, oh yeah, there we go. Already happening. Reactivating all that green, some of that blue. And it's not even like a dark enough color either. It's okay. We kind of figured it was gonna happen. I can always repaint those colors. Um, it's just not going to look as nice because all the colors have gotten kind of muddy now. And that was my fault for painting all those details and forgetting, being distracted, having chat clients up when I should be working. Um, that's on me for forgetting. So it's not gonna be as cute and clean as it is up there. And we're just gonna have to deal with it, y'all. We're just gonna have to roll with it. Should have mixed this color a lot darker. And then at least, instead of it looking all like pale and weird, you would at least be little, oh yeah. Okay, all right, all right, okay. All right, time to, time to rein it in here. Oh yeah, let's just ruin it. It's okay. Can always repaint it. And the things I said about pa painting plaids are still, very valid. We just goofed the first go round, so now we're correcting it. Hopefully, hopefully this will be a little bit better. I can hopefully correct my mistake. If not, let it be known, this was not Prang's fault, this was my fault. I done goofed that. I messed that up. All right, so let that dry and then reapply the plaid. Yeah, we really made a big mess with that. It's okay. I think, I think I learned from it even. And that's what really makes making a mess. That's the best part of making a mess is when you learn something, you can walk away and have a new thing under your belt and makes it all worthwhile. I think, I think sometimes we lose track of that, that like making horrible messes can be a wonderful thing because that's how you learn. So I'm glad I done woof tonight and am figuring things out. Okay, so her dress has dried. It's not as bad, I promise it's not as bad as it looks. It looks, well, top of her bow is not dry and it looks bad. <laughs> Let's see what we can do about that. Dab that, blend that, and then let that dry. But let's go back in and repaint those colors that we originally had. And hopefully it will look good again. I have found 
And I think this is a guaranteed art tip. So get out your pencils, get out your notebooks, start taking notes. This is a real bona fide art tip and I would put money behind it. I guarantee this is gonna help. I have found that if I sing things, it tends to go well. So you guys can take that one to the bank. When y'all are all famous, well-paid artists, when your name is synonymous with Will Eisner and Disney, or as synonymous as, when your name is as big, or I guess if you care about Marvel Stanley, you can say that comic artist Becca Hilburn gave you the best tip you'd ever gotten changed your life she told you to sing it when you do it and it'll make it turn out better and i'll be very disappointed if one of you when all of you guys get famous because i just know you will if none of you think to remember old professor beck and you don't credit me for that be heartbroken depending on you guys y'all are my legacy make it worth it I do need to let her hair bow dry because that is a wet and hot mess. I guess is like the best, the best way we can put this. But even though it doesn't necessarily look like 100% certifiably better, like I would not, I would not put money on that horse that we really fixed that. Um, I do like the contrast more. And I'm a stick with my, with my gun, stick with my decision. Be a woman of my word. Go in here and shade that. And I probably overworked it and that's okay. That's something that you guys who are learning from my mistakes, who are going to be better than old Professor Beck. You guys are gonna stand on my shoulders and be giants you guys can totally not make that mistake with this little paint set. Y'all are totally gonna get famous for using Prang, Prang watercolors. I mean, it could happen. Hedging my bets here, inspiring and encouraging the next generation, however I can. I mean, I don't know. I see people on, on Instagram get five minute famous over all kinds of things. So who's to say this wouldn't be one of them. All right, gotta redo those freckles because they got lost. Kind of overworked the paper because instead of being delicate, they want to be all blobby and weird. So we're gonna grab and dab and make a mess of them. It's okay. It's been an evening, so I'm gonna give myself permission to make mistakes and just be okay with that because I can't be perfect all the time. Okay, then grab some of that red and blend that shadow out a little bit because it's a little harsher than I would have liked. And then of course we gotta walk away, walk away. Although I say that and then I'm like, oh yeah, let me fix this over here. So I realize if I'm gonna make a hot mess, I might as well go big or go home. So I'm going to paint some big holly leaves in the background and just go full on Christmas. Say it with me now, guys. Full on Christmas, the full Christmas. Draw some wonky looking leaves because I'm free handing them. Wow, I just got worse. That's okay. We've given ourselves permission to make mistakes. Also though, maybe if I make mistakes, you guys will feel empowered to give it a try 
make some mistakes of your own, which I always encourage, well, <laughs> I always encourage you guys to make art mistakes of your own. I cannot take, legally cannot take responsibility for any other mistakes you may make as inspired by these videos. Go ahead and remix that much darker hair accent. and give my disaster piece theater a chance to dry. Okay, so we are almost done. I went ahead and I grabbed my white watercolor pencil and I don't think that's gonna go over all of this very shiny, um, and the shiny areas are from all of the glycerin that's in the paint, but I don't think it's gonna go over that. So, yeah, see? That is okay. We are learning today. Now we're in a position to paint the hair darker and I might've grabbed the wrong brush. And then, ugh. I gotta make sure I clean my brushes out really well because a lot of the goop is getting caught up near the ferrule and that is bad news, just no good. And I'm just kind of sketching in the center vein for all of the holly leaves. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then mixing up some red and sketching in some holly berries, not halle berries, holly berries. Just really the more it looks like wrapping paper, the more I feel like I've succeeded in my mission in life. And then normally what I would do, and I might do this and I might not do this, totally depends on how I feel when this all dries, but normally I would go in with, um, like I mentioned earlier, white gouache or Copic Opaque White, something of that nature, and I would tighten things up, add some highlights, which I may or may not do. We'll see how I feel when it dries. So that layer has dried. I'm going to put some Copic, oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, I lied to you. Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White on our cute little illustration. The camera is not doing it justice. You'll have to check out my Instagrams, I guess, to see it. So my thoughts on, zoom it, zoom out, this Prang watercolor set. I like it. Um, it's about as good, maybe not quite as good as the Yarka set that I reviewed earlier that I really liked. And I think it is a great set if you are a an artist who's sort of, or anyone, if you're anyone who's sort of maybe interested in watercolor and you're not sure and you don't want to spend a bunch of money on watercolors. And I know it's crazy because you would think Cotman uh, Winsor & Newton Cotman would be like the better choice, right? I mean, it's Winsor & Newton, you're paying a lot more money for it, but I think these are a better bang for your buck. Personally, your mileage may vary, uh, but I personally think these are a better bang for your buck than the Cotmans. They're less expensive, they deliver more for what you're paying, and that's always been my big problem with Cotman is there's so many people's first real first artist set, I guess, of watercolor. And they're just not good at being a first artist watercolor set. And something like this, and this is dye based. I'm, I'm fairly sure just given how some of these paints react, it's hard to find information. I know when I did the swatch and unbox, I tried to look it up and I couldn't really find anything satisfactory. Whereas I think the Yarka set is pigment based, but for a washable set of watercolors, this is great. You can get some good color intensity. You can mix a range of colors, which is unusual for these cheaper sets. Very inexpensive, fairly easy to find. 
I got mine at my local Jerry's, but I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can get a set if you don't have a Jerry's on Amazon. Good choice of colors, very mixable colors, can get a lot of range with those, so you don't necessarily need the larger set but there are larger sets and they don't cost much more so i don't see any reason not to get a larger set if that's what you're interested in i would certainly recommend this set over that artist loft set that was making the insta rounds i think it's a much better set than that so this is definitely a recommend and not just for parents with kiddos who are looking for something a little more serious than Crayola, this, these will probably stain your clothes, keep in mind. But also for artists who maybe you just want like a little concept, you know, that you can bring to shows and you don't care if something happens to it because you didn't spend that much money on it. Or you, you um, teach classes and you wanna show the basics but you don't wanna invest in sets that might get ruined. I mean, I know this little set probably looks ridiculous. If I was in a high school art class and the teacher pulled this set out, I would just assume it was lack of budget, but it's better than it looks. It performs better than it seems like it should. Definitely better than Crayola. Definitely better than the Artist Law. Much more reasonably priced than the Cotman sets. So these are definitely going to get my vote and we'll probably end up on that top three list, which I hope you guys will keep an eye out for because I know people have requested more affordable watercolor supplies, especially since the holiday season is upon us and people are buying not only for themselves, but for kiddos and their loved ones. So I know people are looking for affordable op art supply, I almost said options and then combined it with art supplies. <laughs> affordable options to fill that art supply sweet tooth. So, and I can't open the cover, unfortunately, because I still have gobs of wet paint in it, but this is the Prang eight piece watercolor set. The individual pa uh, little pans are removable. So once you use these up, if you're ready to graduate to something a little more professional, you could clean these out and fill them with whatever watercolors you like, and it would make a really ideal travel set, very compact. Um, I would ditch this brush and go for something softer because um, just the nature of these sort of paints would really, really benefit from a squirrel hairbrush or something very soft just to sort of not disrupt prior layers. And they're very, they're very forgiving, very reworkable. This piece, I mean, y'all saw I basically completely repainted her dress. You can still see some of that under there. That doesn't bother me. But I was able to layer another layer of red on top of it, pick up the old paint, um, do some shading in there. And it's not a perfect piece, but I think for what I paid for these watercolors and certainly what I paid for this paper, it's very cheap paper. I think these are great. I recommend you check them out. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope this was helpful, informative, and useful to you. I hope it got your juices going and you are inspired to paint. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg to learn to watercolor, to pick up watercolor as an interest or a hobby or to practice with it. And I hope you guys will give traditional art supplies a shot. They can be very affordable as I'm trying to show you guys. So have a great day, guys, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.